the oldest shipyard. Underwater archaeologists from the Maritime Archaeology Trust never cease to delight us with new finds. This time they managed to find what is probably the oldest shipyard in the world. According to preliminary estimates, it is 8,000 years old. Off the coast of, of the Isle of Wight, deep underwater, archaeologists have found a man-made wooden shipyard that was built by Stone Age people. The shipyard did not build yachts or aircraft carriers. Stone Age people built fishing boats on it. Previously, the age of the oldest shipyard was 5,500 hundred years old, and this shipyard used technologies from the future, so to speak. This confirms the fact that either people in antiquity had much more knowledge than we think, or modern dating methods do not work at all. The oldest shipyard used advanced wood processing technology, therefore, this object is very important for maritime archaeology and understanding the development of our civilization. The shipyard was discovered at a depth of 11 meters, and 8,000 years ago, there was was dry land and the area was covered with vegetation. In fact, the shipyard was discovered back in 2005, but only now has technology made it possible to create a three-dimensional model of the structure for further study. It's hard to imagine, but it's a fact. People in the Stone Age boats using their own shipyard for this. This is what kind of technology and knowledge people had in antiquity. I am sure that before it would be very difficult for them to move from the Isle of Wight to the island of Taiwan. And we can do it in a matter of seconds. Ancient Tiny People in Taiwan Taiwan is a very interesting island located 130-220 kilometers east of China. The history of Taiwan's indigenous Austronesians goes back 5,000 years. But according to the legends and stories of local residents in the villages, before the Austronesians, another equally interesting civilization lived here. They were often referred to as pygmies, or tiny people. They had dark skin and curly hair, and their most distinguishing feature was, as you might have guessed, their tiny stature. All information about them was based only on fables and legends. But recently, a very important event happened. In early October of this year, scientists proved the existence of tiny humans in Taiwan. The journal World Archaeology published an article claiming that archaeologists in a cave in southeastern Taiwan have found the remains of ancient people who belong to Negritos. This ethnic group still lives in Philippines, the Malay Peninsula and the Andaman Islands. The term Nagritos is a direct Spanish translation meaning Little Black and is the widely accepted scientific and historical name for this ethnic group. The Nagritos are the first descendants of the first people of Sunderland. For scientists, the study of these remains is very important, since these people most likely migrated from Africa. After conducting research, scientists determined that the possible height of tiny people was 138 centimeters. The first people arrived on the island 30,000 years ago, when there was a land corridor between mainland China and Taiwan. But 10,000 years ago, the corridor went underwater. The legend of the Nagritos people in Taiwan is quite interesting. Of the ethnic groups, about half of the Austronesians saw the Nagritos as enemies, while the other half saw them as allies, neutrals or ancestors. However, one ethnic group, the Saiyid, had a surprisingly difficult relationship Relationship with the Nagritos. The Saiyid is a small population that still exists in Taiwan. They have a tradition called Pa Tai, a ritual dedicated to honoring short people. As the legend says, ancient Saiyids and little Tai once lived nearby. The Tai taught their neighbors medicine, singing, dancing, and other cultural traditions. However, the Tai men harassed the Saiyid women. After that, the Saiyids became angry and killed almost all the Tai people. After this event, a terrible famine evaded them and they thought that they were punished by the vengeful spirit of the pygmies. Since then, they began to conduct the Pa Tai ceremony in which they ask for forgiveness for the sins of their ancestors. Since then, the tiny people ceased to exist. And long before the existence of the human race, our planet was inhabited by giant monsters, and a little boy found a tooth of one such giant on the shore. A unique find of a young paleontologist. 
Just like that, you can come with your family to South Carolina, go to the beach and find something very ancient that makes you shudder. A little boy of 8 years old walking on the beach and digging in the mud found a large fossilized tooth of an ancient shark. Shark tooth is more than 12 centimeters long, which is considered a very large specimen. It's even hard to imagine what this monster looked like 20 million years ago, having more than one such tooth in its mouth and not even 100. An adult in individual of the monster had about 300 teeth in its mouth, and each is about 8-15 centimeters in size. And now, in our time, a little boy just holds this tooth in his hands. It causes shock and admiration at the same time. Paleontologists from all over the world have already written their congratulations to the boy, because even for specialists, a find of this kind is a rare occurrence. Otidus angustitans is a species of megatooth shark that lived during the Oligocene and Miocene epochs approximately 32 to 22 million years ago. Sharks have been known to grow to at least 10 meters in length. These sharks are related to the Otodus megalodon, another extinct giant tooth shark. That is, you understand that there were many such sharks in ancient times, and what prevents them now from swimming deep in the ocean farther from a reasonable person? There is already a lot of information about megalodons on YouTube, but I still remind you that the length of this shark reached 20 meters, and the size of the largest living whale is 33 meters. However, whales are not predators, and this creature did not mind eating any living organism on our planet. Let's take a break from teeth for a bit and move to Mexico. Two 2,500-year-old Olmec reliefs The Olmecs are the oldest civilization in Mesoamerica. To be precise, this is the oldest civilization that we know about, and to be even more precise, we know very little about them. The heyday of their civilization was from about 1600 to 400 BC. They lived along the Gulf of Mexico, where the state of Tabasco and Veracruz are now located. Archaeologists themselves do not even know how these people called themselves, though the word Olmec is a Nahuatl word, Aztec language, and means rubber people. These people had ritual bloodletting, they loved to play with the bowl and drink chocolate, and also they were the ancestors of the Maya, also about, about which the scientific world knows much more. And the Olmecs carved giant stone hats from volcanic rocks, this became their hallmark. Old buildings discovered by archaeologists were deliberately destroyed, that is, more than 2000 years ago, someone deliberately tried to wipe out a whole people with all the buildings from the face of the earth. Recently, archaeologists have discovered Olmec reliefs that were made of limestone. They were about 1.5 meters in diameter and weighed 700 kilograms. Stone reliefs have been found in the municipality of Tenasique in Tabasco in southeastern Mexico. It is assumed that the local Olmec rulers are depicted on the reliefs during the performance of ritual ceremonies. Perhaps these people are in a position that reduces the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain, which causes a trance-like state. From the stone heads of the rulers of Mesoamerica, we will move to Africa, where a pink stone sarcophagus awaits us. Pink Treasure Keeper Sarcophagus Dream find. That's what archaeologists called the sarcophagus, which they managed to find near Cairo. As you know, very important people of ancient Egypt were kept in sarcophaguses. It seems to me that the ancient Egyptians buried a high ranking nobleman 3,300 years ago, clearly not so that we can now get him out of the tomb and study him with the help of modern equipment. But how else can we study the history of our ancestors if the papyruses contain far from all the information about the life of the pharaohs? Scientists have already found out that the pink sarcophagus belonged to Ptah M. Vaya, who served as the head of the treasury under Ramses the Great. On all sides, the sarcophagus is decorated with hieroglyphs and various titles. It lay at a depth of 10 meters for more than 3,000 years and now looks like it did on the first day. Historians have little data on who ruled Egypt after Tutankhamun. Therefore, every find is important. The pink sarcophagus indicates that the person buried 
in it was close to the king and played a very important role in the state administration of that time. If it's easy to explain to you in modern language, the Pata and Laya in the modern world would be the Minister of Finance. To get to the tomb, archaeologists had to dig up and take out tons of sand, and this was only the first level of the tomb, located next to the Pyramid of King Unas. Under the sand, they found masonry, and in order to further dive to the second level of the tomb, the masonry had to be strengthened. Through a small hole in the floor, they descended to the second level of the tomb, where the sarcophagus was located. Archaeologists descended in a metal basket, lowering and raising themselves on their own. It would seem that with such technologies in the 21st century, excavations have to be carried out in the same way as 200 years ago. The condition of the sarcophagus was good, but the broken cover indicated the presence of marauders here. Usually different people were reburied in sarcophaguses, but in our case, the sarcophagus belonged to its first owner. This is confirmed by the hieroglyphs and titles found in the sarcophagus. Professor Al Aguiz's team will now fully examine the sarcophagus to uncover the full life story of Pata and Waya. And around the same time, in the Marianas, people lured octopuses. Ancient Octopus Bait 3,500 years ago in the Marianas, people loved to eat octopuses, and to catch these amazing creatures, they used small cuts and drilled pieces of curry shells. This is a type of sea snail that octopuses really like. The shells were fastened with a small stone sinker with grooves. This tradition originated here 3,500 years ago and lasted until about 1,000 AD. Similar finds have been found on other Pacific islands. This suggests that ancient Ancient people shared their knowledge of fishing and hunting among themselves, even though they were separated by hundreds and thousands of kilometers. At the moment, it is these octopus baits that are considered the most ancient on the planet. This tells us that this type of food resource was important enough for them that they invented something very special to catch octopuses. It is difficult to say what made up the bulk of their diet, but if we take another experience in archaeology, we can say that for the ancient people of the Mariana Islands, octopuses were considered traditional food. If everything is clear with seafood, then it's completely incomprehensible what kind of strange pits were found in Peru. Thousands of strange holes in Peru on the territory of Peru, archaeologists find hundreds and even thousands of artifacts and various finds that defy explanation. I will be honest, many of these finds are fakes, and the creators of these finds simply make money on gullible people. In the Pisco Valley, archaeologists have discovered thousands of holes. The Peruvians themselves call them differently. Monte Sirp, which means snake mountain, and Sierra Veruela, which literally translates as smallpox hill, or simply a strip of holes. But the most unusual names came up on the net. They are called an incubator for alien acts. These pits are located in very inaccessible place, so there are few scientists who were able to visit here. From this, it is still impossible to explain the origin of holes. They were first seen flying by plane in the 30s of the last century. In the 50s, the first expedition of scientists set off here which managed to calculate the size and number of holes. The strip of holes stretched for one and a half kilometers, and the width of the strip was from 14 to 20 meters. But the number of holes shocked the researchers. There were more than 5,000 of them. The first idea that scientists came up with was an ancient mass grave. That is why there are more questions. Pits from half a meter to a meter deep. Nearby there are no traces of a person, artifacts of ancient civilizations, nothing at all that could give at least some clue to to explain this place. Archaeologists have different theories about the origin of the pits, but most of them are pseudoscientific. One thing is known for sure, that these pits are at least hundreds of years old, and most likely they were created by people. You can write in the comments your assumptions for what they could be used in the past. The rarest mosaic in Syria archaeologists have managed to find an ancient mosaic that depicts the Trojan War. The find is about 1,600 years old and very well preserved. 
found it in northern Syria. Nothing like it had been found before. On the mosaic, you can see the battle of ancient Greek warriors and Amazons under the walls of Troy. You can even see the names of the commanders who were armed with swords and shields. Most likely they were famous warriors of those times. The area of this work of art is 120 square meters, and it adorned the floor of an ancient Roman bath. The Trojan War took place between the ancient Greeks and the inhabitants of Troy around the 12th or 13th century BC. The uniqueness of this mosaic lies in the depiction of Amazon women who fought on the side of Troy. The Amazons were, in ancient Greek and Roman mythology, the demigod Heracles killed Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, in one of his 12 labors. The Trojan battle lasted 10 years. Looking back, 10 years doesn't seem like a lot of time, but if you bring that figure to our time, it sends shivers all over your body. But back to history. For nine years, the Greeks destroyed the nearby cities and villages, but the city of Troy itself was too tough for them. This was a fortress that could not be captured, but the Greeks came up with a trick that everyone knows about in our time. The most interesting thing is that not the slightest wooden pieces of this giant horse have been found so far. Therefore, for now, the story of the Trojan horse can be considered a legend. Representatives of the Nabu Museum hope that excavations in ancient Erastan will continue. According to them, the city is full of heritage monuments and artifacts. No serious archaeological excavations have been carried out in this place yet, so we can only guess how many more amazing finds await us in the future. 600-year-old kitchen Novi Jesen was supposedly founded at the end of the 13th century at the crossroads of trade routes from Poland and Silesia to the Czech Republic and Hungary. The first written mention of Novi Jesen dates back to 1313, when King Johann of Luxembourg granted him the first city privileges, the right to collect customs fees and duties. Archaeologists suggest that the city used to have a predominantly wooden building, but admit that little is known about the medieval settlement. Medieval houses were built of wood and clay, but they were gradually replaced with brick structures. This was especially active in the New Age. The stone foundations of an older building were found under the floor of the courtyard room at the rear of the layout of the current house. Throughout the area bounded by this foundation, the remains of a charred wooden floor have been preserved. It was a log house built on a stone foundation, archaeologists dated to the beginning of the 15th century. The house is located on the northern side of the city walls of the historical center, which indicates that it most likely belonged to a burger family, a representative of the medieval bourgeoisie. In the southwest corner of the room, archaeologists found the well-preserved remains of a brick oven with a hearth, as well as a complete set of kitchen utensils with a wooden cooking spoon. They mark the perfect condition of the medieval utensils. The ceramic pots are intact and with original lids. It looks like they were washed and left to dry on the hearth. Among the artifacts, glass rings were found that could be part of women's necklace, a spring lock for a door or chest, and an iron pitchfork with three teeth. The finds are now undergoing the process of conservation, after which they will be stored in the Nova Ichinsk Museum. Three-toed extraterrestrial mummies a few years ago, a new find was made in Peru, which was a very strange extraterrestrial mummy, which at the end of the expedition was nicknamed Maria. Five mummies have been found, one female and four male, and according to experts, they are very similar to humans, but too different to have any relationship with us. They were found in a tomb near the Peruvian Nazca Lines, which is already a warning sign that we are dealing with aliens, but the mummies also have 23 pairs of chromosomes, which could mean that they are human after all. They date back to the 5th century AD, a full millennium before the Europeans discovered America. Constantine Korotkov and Natalia Zalozhna collected tissue samples and brought them to St. Petersburg for analysis. If Korotkov believed that this was a race of people who developed much faster than the rest, then Zalozhna is sure that it was still a race of aliens. 
X-rays and computed tomography also show that Maria has a completely different structure of the ribs than we do. It is shaped like a keel at the top, and despite the fact that the cage protects the internal organs of the creature in the same way as ours, for this it had several semicircular ribs. In the end, they came to the conclusion that these two could not possibly be our relatives. These mummies represent a race of aliens that lived among us in ancient times, and that's a fact. Terrible Child Sacrifice Archaeologists find evidence of human sacrifice in all corners of the globe. But what they saw in the north of Peru, in the vicinity of the ancient capital of the Chimu people, Chan Chan, shocked even experienced researchers. The remains of 269 children with traces of cut wounds on the sternum and ribs. Who and why committed this terrible murder? In total, the remains of 269 children from 5 to 14 years old and 3 adults are found in two adjacent graves. They all perished more than 500 years ago in the course of carefully thought-out sacrifices. Perhaps such rituals, neither before nor since, have known the history of the world. In 2011, the owner of a local pizzeria shared surprising news. His children and local dogs began to find human bones sticking out of the sand in a nearby vacant lot. He begged the archaeologists to find out what was the matter. At first, Preda thought it was just a forgotten cemetery, but having unearthed the remains of several children wrapped in shrouds and received their radiocarbon dates 1400-1450, the archaeologists realized that he had stumbled upon a large-scale and terrible burial. It is not so easy to resurrect the events in Huan Chiquito, mainly because scientists know very little about the Chimu culture. Light on the mystery of Huan Chiquito sheds hardened cells in which the victims were buried. Thick layers of silt indicate prolonged heavy rains. The people of Chan Chan depended on well-established irrigation systems and coastal fishing, but the rise in sea temperature and heavy rains caused by this climatic phenomena could shake both the political and economic foundations of the Chimu Empire. Perhaps the priests and chieftains decided to perform a mass sacrifice in a desperate attempt to plead with the gods to stop the flood and the famine. Jane Eva Baxter, an anthropologist at DePaul University in Chicago, supports the hypothesis that in the eyes of the Chimu, children could be one of the most valuable gifts that could be presented to the gods. The Burial of the Woman Vampire in the practice of archaeologists, sometimes there are deviant burials. They stand out due to the funeral rite that differs from the generally accepted in this culture. So, the dead could be buried outside the cemetery or deprived of some part of the body. The appearance of deviant burials could be influenced by many reasons, related both to the belief system and to the circumstances of life and death of people buried in an unusual manner. One of the categories of non-standard burials are the graves of the so-called vampires. Archaeologists believe that such burials contain the remains of people who were feared by others. They were afraid that the deceased would rise from their graves. To prevent this from happening, the dead were put stones in their mouth, mutilated and even nailed to the ground. In addition, the placement of sickles and scythe on the neck of abdomen was practiced. They could appoint a vampire for an unusual appearance, witchcraft, suicide or the first victims of epidemics. Polish archaeologists from the Nicholas Copernicus University in Turin, led by Professor Dariusz Polinski, carried out excavations near the city of Baigdosk, where, in 2005-2009, an early medieval necropolis was explored, the burials of which contained valuable inventory. This year, however, scientists have focused their attention on a neighboring 17th-century burial complex damaged by agricultural work. In one of the burials, archaeologists discover the remains of a vampire woman. An iron sickle lay around her neck, and a padlock was placed on the big toe of her left foot. 
At the same time, the remains of a silk headdress have been preserved on the skull of this woman, which may indicate her rather high status, since in the 17th century it was a very expensive commodity. Perhaps the reason why the locals buried her in such an unusual way lies in the non-standard appearance of the woman. Her front tooth protruded forward. Lady Rai Lady Rai is one of the oldest known mummies discovered in Egypt. She was discovered in 1881, and researchers estimate she was in her 30s or 40s when she died around 1530 BC. From the writings left about Lady Rai, we know that she was the nurse of Queen Amos Nefertari, the first queen of the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt. The mummified body of Amos in Happy, Amos Nefertari's aunt, was found in Lady Rai's outer coffin. In 2009, researchers performed a CT scan on Lady Rai's body and found that she had atherosclerosis. She is the oldest known mummy with the disease, and several other Egyptian mummies also show signs of atherosclerosis. Woman buried with baby in her arms in the area of the city of Nieuwegein, Netherlands, archaeologists have discovered many monuments of the Neolithic culture of the Swiftebend. Ancient pastoralists settled along river banks in what is now the Netherlands between 5,300 and 3,400 BC. About 136,000 artifacts of this culture were discovered by experts under a 2-meter layer of peat and clay in the business park Hat Closer. During the excavation, archaeologists discovered four skeletons, removed them together with the deposits in a single block, and delivered them to the Leiden Archaeological Laboratory for research. One of the skeletons belonged to a young woman, 20-30 years old, who died about 6,000 years ago. Initially, experts considered the burial to be single. The pose of the skeleton seemed strange. The right arm was bent at an angle of 90 degrees, which is not typical for the burials of this culture. Only after a thorough analysis, experts found a tiny skeleton of an infant in the area of the hand, collarbones, skull, long bones, and a jaw with milk teeth. Judging by the development of the teeth, the child was about three months old at the time of death. The find turned out to be the oldest children's burial in the Netherlands. In the grave itself, besides the bones, there are no artifacts, but pieces of deer antlers and clay pots were found nearby. DNA analysis conducted in 2019 showed that the child was a girl, while the woman turned out to be the mother of the baby. Ships of Caligula the ships of Emperor Caligula, built in the 1st century AD, were not intended for sea battles or travel. They were magnificent pleasure houses adorned with gold and precious stones. The largest ships of antiquity sailed on a small mountain lake and sank under unclear circumstances. The master of pleasure, Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, is a man better known in history by his nickname Caligula, Boot. Caligula ruled the Roman Empire from 37 to 41 AD, and for four years of power, he was remembered by posterity as one of the most odious rulers of a great power. As if trying to find the limits of human capabilities and test the strength of the empire's budget, the Mona carried out the most incredible and expensive projects. Huge ships launched into the water in the volcanic caldera of Lake Nemi have become one of such fantastic creations. We are talking about two rowing galleys. One of them served as a temple to the goddess of the forest Diana. The other was supposedly a pleasure palace. The largest ship reached 73 meters in length and 24 meters in width. The smaller vessel, 70 meters long and 20 wide, was not equipped with oars. It was pulled in tow. For comparison, the British steamer Titanic, famous for the largest ship of the early 19th century, reached 270 meters in length and 28 meters in width. Caligula's galleys were inferior in parameters to the Titanic, but they sailed on a lake with a diameter of no more than 1,000 meters. By their time, they were giants splashing in a puddle. But something else was interesting. Flowering gardens were laid out on the ships, on which fruit trees branched 
arranged, flowers for fragrance and grapes hung down. There were also baths, pools, a revolving stage and palaces with rooms for slaves and guests. Communications included plumbing with cold and hot water as well as warm floors. Of course, the entire interior was skillfully decorated with hats of wild animals, patterns and noble metal. Jewels glittered on the oars. The roofs of the palace and the temple cast gold in the sun, stood on marble columns and covered amazingly beautiful mosaic floor. Statues stood here and there, bas reliefs and paintings adorned the walls. The stage, which consisted of revolving platforms, was of amazing beauty and functionality. Their design used a ball-bearing system, which was reinvented only towards the end of the 19th century. And all this splendor existed 2,000 years ago. One can only guess and envy what holidays Caligula celebrated there. The skeletons of the ships, which were remarkably preserved at the bottom of the lake thanks to the solidity of the ancient Romans, were exhibited in the museum. The museum was destroyed in 1944 either by the Germans or by the Americans. Historians disagree. However, not all is lost. According to the researchers, most likely another ship rests at the bottom of the lake, reaching a length of 122 meters. It seems that the main sensations are still ahead of us. Active Girl the Actived Girl is a famous Danish mummy who was buried in a well-preserved coffin discovered in 1921. Although the tree trunk coffin was well-preserved, the girl's bones were not preserved, only her clothes hair, nails, and some teeth were in good condition. Also inside her coffin were the cremated remains of a child, who was about five or six years old. Historians believe that the young lady was a priestess of the Scandinavian cult of the sun because of the spiral symbols on her belt. Later, research showed that the girl was not from the Denmark but from the Black Forest in Germany. It is believed that she may have married a chieftain in Denmark to form a strategic alliance. The oldest natural mummy on the planet. The mummy was found in the Spirit Cave in Nevada in 1940. Despite the fact that the man died more than 10,600 years ago, his mummy is perfectly preserved. It is interesting that the body was wrapped in a sheet and a reed mat, and moccasins were preserved on the feet of the deceased. Previous analyses have shown that the remains belong to a man who died at the age of 40. Thanks to comfortable conditions, the mummy has almost completely survived to this day. The whole upper part of the skull, the skin on the back and shoulders, a bunch of dark hair in the back of the head. Next to the man, scientists found 70 different items, including knives, baskets and animal bones. They also found two woolen bags filled with ashes and bones of cremated people. Litigation about the origin of the the mummy began in 1996, when scientists conducted the first radiocarbon analysis, which showed that the age of the mummy is 9,400 years. Around the same time, representatives of the Shoshone tribe, a North American group of Indian tribes who speak the languages of the Uta Aztec and language family, declared that the mummy belonged to them. The Shoshone demanded that the remains be handed over immediately under the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, but the scientists did not accept the request, since the mummies belonging to any people was not established. Then the long legal proceedings began, which lasted almost 20 years. Some scientists did not want to give away the remains to the tribe, as the mummy occupied a place of honor in the museum and told a lot about the ancient inhabitants of North America. Two years ago, representatives of the Shoshone tribe gave specialists permission to conduct the first genetic analysis of the mummy. The analysis showed that the remains of the men are indeed of American origin. Scientists explained that this mummy was extremely important for the tribe, since the Cave of Spirits has a sacred meaning for them. The mummy has now been officially handed over to the tribe. Antique Refrigerator I will start the story about archaeological finds from Bulgaria, where in the camp of Roman legionnaires in Nova, archaeologists found a unique container made of ceramic plates, which was most likely used as a refrigerator. This camp was built in the 1st century AD. The territory of the ancient camp has been studied by Bulgarian and Polish archaeologists for decades. This year, under the guidance of Professor Peter Dicek, a refrigerator was discovered 
uncovered, which was located in military barracks. In it, the legionaries kept the remnants of food. Similar refrigerators have been found before, but they are still considered rare. In addition to the refrigerator, archaeologists have found dozens of coins, but the next find discovered at a garbage dump in Poland will definitely surprise you. The largest treasure was taken to a dump. You can find anything in a garbage dump, from rare furniture and collectible prints to weapons and even money. But what exactly no one expected to see in a landfill is one of the largest treasure troves in Europe. In Poland, not far from Wroclaw, in the city of Sroda a precious treasure was discovered at a construction waste dump, which was nicknamed the Srotsky Treasure. It consisted of medieval coins and jewels of Czech monarchs from the 14th century. The treasure was discovered by workers in 1985, who were raking a pile of construction debris from destroyed houses. One of the workers saw gold coins spilling out of a northern wear vessel. He stopped the machinery and took the coins for himself. I note that earlier coins have already been found here, but these were isolated cases. While the local authorities found out about this treasure, some of the coins and precious jewelry were stolen by the locals. When archaeologists arrived at this place and took out everything that was left there, they estimated it at $100-$120 million. Of the most valuable that was unearthed was the royal crown, which belonged to Blank de Valois, the wife of King Charles IV of Bohemia. So, by chance, ordinary workers were able to find one of the most expensive treasures in Europe. From gold coins, we will abruptly move on to drawings of ancient people with giant hats. Drawings of creepy people with huge hats now we will go to central Tanzania, where ancient artists in a cave left us strange drawings. In the Svaga Svaga hunting reserve, archaeologists have found a uniquely painted rock. There, the researchers found the remains of drawings, some of which disappeared without a trace. But one drawing has survived quite well, although it raises many questions. Drawings of humanoid figures with large hats were found in the Amaki 4 cave. According to archaeologists, this cave is several hundred years old, but it is difficult to determine exactly when these drawings appeared here. Researchers believe that these are the heads of buffaloes. In the Sando culture, buffaloes were an important part of the rituals, but there were no people with buffalo heads in their history, although the horns of these characters exactly resemble those of a buffalo. Not far from this place, archaeologists found two more similar drawings of creepy humanoid creatures with huge hats. All of them are very similar to each other. So far, archaeologists cannot give an exact answer who the artist tried to portray in antiquity. But scientists still have a small clue. In the Kandua region, where the rock paintings were found, the Sandu people live, who use various drawings for their rituals. Perhaps they will help archaeologists explain the origin of these drawings. From Tanzania, we will go to the Middle East, to another cave, where the finds are no less impressive. Weapons older than 400,000 years in Iran, archaeologists, together with their colleagues from France, discovered unique artifacts in the Kali Court cave, which are more than 400,000 years old. They also found traces of ancient people whose age they determined using electron spin resonance, since it was not possible to date the traces by the classical radiocarbon method. A huge number of stone tools in this cave gave scientists the opportunity to restore the chronology of people stay in this place. Archaeologists have suggested that the last inhabitant of this cave was a Neanderthal, and before him there lived Homo erectus and Heidelberg men. At the moment, this cave is considered the oldest settlement on our planet. How many more places like this we have to find, perhaps even older than this cave? But the next find, although much newer, is very unusual. Very rare and unusual item. In the southeast of Germany, archaeologists have found, at first glance, the usual burial of a woman. They dated it to 680. But the object with which she was buried was very strange and rare. Scientists from the Bavarian State Office for the Protection of Monuments say that the woman had a high social status. This is understandable, because a metal folding chair was found next to her. 
Right, only a folded frame measuring 70 by 45 centimeters has been preserved from the chair, and the age of the woman was estimated at 40-50 years. Most likely, the chair in addition to metal was made of other materials, such as wood and leather. For Germany, this discovery is the first, and in Europe, it is already the 29th in a row, but only six of them had a metal frame. To discover such a find is considered a great gift in the world of archaeology. After all, it is very rare and its meaning is little understood. To better study the ancient world, you need to have more patterns and input data, and for this, archaeologists need to dig and study a lot. In our case, the burial with folding chairs had a symbolic meaning in the past. They buried people with such gifts that had a high social status and this concerned more men. But that's not the problem, in most of the discovered burials were women. In addition to the chair, archaeologists found a pearl necklace with multicolored glass beads and a belt with brooches, and next to it lays the bone of an animal, perhaps a cow. What this present meant to the afterlife, archaeologists could no longer explain. Not far from the female burial, a male was also found. The man was buried with a full complement of weapons and artifacts that have yet to be studied. What was the most delicious cheese you have ever tasted? Write in the comments, and for now, I will tell you about the cheese, which is 2,600 years old. 2,600-year-old halloumi cheese how can you show the finds of archaeologists and not talk about ancient Egypt? So, in the Saqqara necropolis, archaeologists discovered a fermented milk product that we are used to seeing on store shelves these days. 2,600-year-old halloumi cheese found in ancient earthenware vessels. Each vessel had demotic inscriptions, which is a form of ancient Egyptian writing. Archaeologists have examined some of the vessels and confirmed that they contain halloumi. All vessels were taken to the laboratory, where they will be studied in more detail. I understand that some cheeses become more expensive and tastier with age, but I would not try such an expensive cheese. In ancient Egypt, cheese was originally called called harem, but today it has become known as halim, or halloumi. There is another version of the origin of cheese. Some historians claim that it first appeared in the Byzantine period on the island of Cyprus. This cheese melts at a high temperature, so it is often grilled, and from Egypt we will move to Southeast Asia, where the most ancient forest awaits us. Ancient forest with the tallest trees Diptera cups are the dominant group of trees in the rainforests of Kalimantan and have been present on the island for at least 4 million years. This is the third largest island in the world, the only island divided between three states, Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. Researchers sound the alarm. This forest is on the verge of extinction and humanity can lose its history, which is 4 million years old. The researchers studied the remains of stone leaves and stated that the modern landscape of Kalimantan existed during the Pliocene era. The island is home to 270 species of dipterocarp, half of the total number of species on the planet. This tree species is one of the tallest tropical trees in the world. Some of them can reach a height of more than 100 meters. It is very difficult to find fossilized leaves in the tropical dense jungle. Previously, research was carried out on the basis of fossilized pollen, but the pollen decomposes quickly and the tests were not accurate. Now, archaeologists should hurry to collect as many of the fossilized remains of these ancient giants as possible before humanity destroys the mangroves in this region. Have you ever wondered why ancient bears lived in caves? Watch further, and I will try to answer this question. Why did the ancient bear love caves so much? Many documentaries and cartoons have been shot about bears. The bear was a symbol of the 1980 Olympics, it's the emblem of many cities, and there are legends about its strength. In ancient times, a bear lived on our planet, which surpassed all those living today combined. The giant reached three and a half meters in height, and they called it a caveman. It's just not clear exactly whether he actually lived in a cave or not. In territories from Ireland and England to Western Siberia, a cave bear appeared about 300,000 years ago, which is a close relative of brown bears. It is not difficult to guess that he got his name for the reason that his remains were found in caves. 
but we cannot say that he was constantly there. Most likely the bears climbed into the caves to spend the night. To feed such a giant, the bears had to eat cattle. However, it is not true. Bears are mostly vegetarian and feed mainly on berries, roots, insects and plants. However, when the bears entered the steppe, it was difficult for them to survive on plants alone, so they ate everything they came across on the way. When their fat reserves were full, they looked for a suitable cave for themselves and fell into hibernation. But their danger awaited the giants. No matter how huge you are, when you sleep, you're vulnerable. That's what cave lions used. Sometimes the bears managed to hide from the lions, but they had another enemy. These are our ancestors. People specifically looked for sleeping bears in order to kill them. The skin was used for clothing, the meat for food, and the cave as a dwelling. But even this was not enough for the people. Based on the killing of clubfoot, they came up with various magical rites, and bear skulls were used as artifacts of power. Approximately 15,000 years ago, the last cave bear was killed by a man, as evidenced by the latest finds of the remains of ancient giants. But the oldest fossilized heart that has been discovered is 380 million years old, and I will tell about it further. The Most Ancient Heart a new find of archaeologists came to us from Australia, although earlier it could have sailed to us. We are talking about the oldest fossilized heart of a living being that has ever been found. This is the heart of a fish, and its age is 380 million years. Previously, scientists could study the anatomy of ancient organs only on the basis of the skeletal system, since the soft tissues of fossil animals practically do not survive to this day. This time, the scientists were very lucky. The heart belongs to a group of armored fish, a type of arthrodiray. These creatures lived on our planet between 420 and 360 million years ago. They were among the first vertebrates to develop a jaw. In addition to the heart, scientists managed to find the stomach, intestines, and liver of ancient fish. The most interesting thing is that all the organs lay in their original position, and for hundreds of millions of years, they were not crushed by heavy rocks. Finding fish organs in their original form is an incredible miracle for the scientific world. This helped scientists see how evolution took place and what the anatomy of fish looked like about 400 million years ago, as if they were studying freshly caught fish. Based on the fossils they found, they made the first 3D model of an arthrodiary heart. The researchers said that the anatomy of ancient fish was not much different from the human. And if you have, let's say, 25 million dollars, then you can buy yourself a skeleton of a very ancient creature. Tyrannosaurus Rex Skeleton Up for Auction if you're a big fan of archaeology and prehistoric creatures, love to explore the ancient world and tell your friends about it, and if you have at least $25 million, then at the auction in Hong Kong you can get a 12-meter skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus Rex named Shen. This skeleton was discovered in the United States in 2020 in Macon County in Montana. This creature is approximately 68-66 million years old, and the complete skeleton of the giant was collected over two years. The auction will take place this year on November 30, and if you want to have time to buy it, then you should hurry. But most likely you will not have time, because a potential buyer has already been found, a multimillionaire who plans to place a skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus Rex in his mansion. Let me remind you that its length is 12.2 meters, height is 4.5 meters, and this giant weighs almost 1.5 tons. Currently, the skeleton belongs to a private collector, but soon the skeleton will go to its new owner. Tyrannosaurus Rex is one of the deadliest dinosaurs on the planet. He had the strongest bite in history while he had a fairly developed brain. This is the only complete skeleton of 80 million Tyrannosaurus that has survived to this day. And the second skeleton which is up for auction. Straight-toothed Elephant Tusk Two years ago in Germany, between Hannover and Leipzig, archaeologists discovered the bone of a straight-toothed elephant. It was a huge cervical vertebrae. Later, archaeologists discovered other bones of this animal. Finding a complete skeleton of a 4-meter-high elephant is a rarity. After numerous studies, scientists have established that this elephant was eaten by ancient people. However, he died of natural causes. After all, he was about 50 years old, and they found him near an ancient lake where elephants 
elephants went to drink. And already this year in September in Israel, biologist Lee Perigal found a well-preserved tusk of a straight-toothed elephant. Its length is 2.5 meters and 20 centimeters in diameter. It has not yet been possible to completely get the tusk, so it is still impossible to accurately determine the type of elephant. But, as you know, archaeologists like to rush and draw their conclusions ahead of time. According to them, it is a straight tusk forest elephant, Paleolaxodon antiquus. It was often hunted by our ancestors and in certain regions, elephants of this species were the main source of meat. Growth exceeded 4 meters and weight reached up to 1.5 tons. As you already understood, the meat of such an elephant could feed a very large family. We no longer need to hunt elephants and cave bears. You can watch it on your screens. Human Skeleton in a Flooded Cave At the beginning of the video, we will go to the Caribbean coast of Mexico in a cave system that was flooded at the end of the Ice Age. Here, an amateur archaeologist discovered the skeleton of a prehistoric man that is over 8,000 years old. I want to note that these are not the first human remains discovered in the caves of Mexico. At this point, the government plans to build a high-speed train through the jungle and attract tourists. And as often happens, the best archaeological discoveries occur in the places of future construction. Archaeologists and divers claim that the skeleton was too far from the entrance to the cave, which means that the ancient man could not have swum that far without the use of modern equipment. According to other studies, the water level was much lower around that time, so the cave were flooded after people began to live here. Who the skeleton belongs to and what its exact age remains to be seen, but we know exactly where one of the oldest human teeth on the planet was found. 1.8 million year old human tooth. And now we will go to Georgia, to the South Caucasus. It is here that one of the earliest prehistoric settlements in Europe is located. And the other day again, archaeologists were in for an incredible surprise. They found one of the oldest teeth on the planet belonging to the human species. This once again confirms that Georgia was one of the first places where our ancestors went to conquer Europe. Most likely, the European species of man originated from this region. The tooth was found about 100 kilometers from the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi, in the village of Orzmani. Stone tools and animal remains were previously found here, but the remains of Homo erectus were discovered here for the first time. Not far from this place, in the late 90s, early 2000s, human skulls aged 1.8 million years were found here. It was the first find of its kind outside of Africa. This forced scientists to change their understanding of the migration of the human species. Based on these findings, archaeologists claim that Georgia was one of the first places where ancient man arrived during his migration from Africa. According to Georgia Bedzanashvili, scientific leader of the excavation team, this tooth belongs to the cousin of Zeva and Mzea. This was the name of the owners of the fossilized skulls which were discovered earlier in the Manisi. But the oldest fossilized remains of the genus Homo are still considered to be part of the jaw found in Ethiopia. It is about 2.8 million years old. Scientists suggest that the first migrations began about 2 million years ago, although ancient tools have been discovered in China that are 2.1 million years old. This suggests that we still have a lot to learn about the ancient world. That's why our channel is here to help you. And we move on. Royal Crypt in Peru this time we will go to South America, where treasure hunters from all over the world have been stealing ancient burials in Peru for decades. Fortunately, they missed the huge royal crypt, which belonged to a little studied civilization. Under a layer of sand, this crypt hid from robbers for more than a thousand years. In the town of El Castillo de Wami, Professor Milos Kirsch, in his entire life, saw many terrible things that he hadn't seen anywhere else on our planet. Here we found the remains of ancient insects that fed on human flesh and snakes coiled into rings at the bottom of ceramic vessels. In 
during one of the expeditions, a swarm of giant bees flew into archaeologists. It's like the plot of a movie. But this is exactly what the work of archaeologists in the impenetrable jungle looks like. And also that we can explore the ancient world. For more than a hundred years, tomb raiders have hoped to find a tomb with mummies wrapped in precious fabrics and adorned with precious stones. Melas Kirsch believed that in El Castillo he could find that very mysterious tomb, although most of the people from his entourage dissuaded him from this expedition. He believed that some important event of that time took place in this place about a thousand years ago. Many artifacts of the Peruvian Huari civilization were found in these parts. Thanks to the drone, a group of researchers managed to see the outlines of the walls on the hill. It turned out that this was only the beginning of a great expedition. Hidden on the ground was a gigantic labyrinth of high walls and towers. Archaeologists even managed to determine that the walls were painted bright red. Under the ground, it was possible to discover the royal tomb, with four queens and more than 50 remains of noble persons. Copper axes, silver bowls, and gold jewelry – this is what black diggers hunted for. And only Melas Kirsch managed to find it in the tomb in El Castillo. In ancient times, it was believed that the status of a person is important not only during life, but also after death. Therefore, the burial of important people was so rich. From the little information that we know about the Huari civilization, we know that women were skilled craftswomen and made fabrics that were better than the Flemish and Dutch weavers of the 16th century. Mystery of the Black Slime Scientists have finally solved the mystery of the black slime often found in Egyptian tombs. In 2018, in Alexandria, archaeologists unearthed a giant black sarcophagus that was completely filled with this terrible substance. And only a few years later, scientists were able to understand what it is. Let me remind you that scientists and historians expected to see Alexander the Great in this sarcophagus, but when they opened it, they were amazed. There were three skeletons in it, two men and one woman. These skeletons were filled with a black substance. Conspiracy theorists joined the study. They claimed that by opening this tomb, humanity would be cursed and those who opened it would release a black force that would spread throughout the planet. Fortunately, scientists are not cowards. The researchers collected more than a hundred samples of mucus from other ancient Egyptian burials. The analysis showed that the mucus consists of vegetable oil, tree resin, beeswax, animal fat, and bitumen. At least all of the samples contained ingredients. Only the proportions differed. Interestingly, all of these ingredients were imported to Egypt, and the mixing was carried out by dedicated specialists. First, the mummy was immersed in a sarcophagus, and then it was coated or filled with this liquid. Most likely, in addition to the religious meaning, black mucus also helped as the preservation of the diseased. It was believed that in this way the mummy would be safe, both spiritually and physically. 1,000-year-old Mayan Settlement a mysterious ancient Mayan settlement was discovered by archaeologists in the Mennonite farming settlement. The ruined dwellings look like white mounds. Scientists have studied pottery found in these places and dated it between 250 and 600 AD. As you know, this period went down in history for its large-scale construction and urbanization. In those days, the Maya had a well-developed artistic art. The buildings have plastered floors and a collection of domestic cooking vessels, and in some buildings, archaeologists have found agricultural tools made of flint. The Maya had a well-developed agriculture and they used the forests to breed animals in their natural environment. This is indicated by the massive accumulation of bones in this area. One of the buildings looked like an ancient temple, completely plastered with white limestone, and the flint items found there were most likely used as ceremonial offerings. Skull with Strange Symbols a sensational discovery was shown to the public by Mexican researcher Pablo Enrique Garcia Sanchez. He stated that not only people lived on Earth, but as evidence he showed a certain skull. However, this find raises many questions. 
About four years ago, near the city of Texco, miners approached Pablo Garcia. They said that at a depth of 30-35 years, they began to find very strange objects. The collection of artifacts surprised even the explorer. The miners brought to the surface beads made of various semi-precious stones, a jade blade and various amulets and talismans made of bone. These finds amazed the archaeologist and he turned to the government with the request to excavate the mine and close it for a while. After obtaining permission, he immediately began excavations. He managed to find more than 100 household items, ritual tools and jewelry. But what is unique in all this is something else. Almost every item had inscriptions in an unknown language. Language. And at the beginning of this year, a group of archaeologists led by our hero found a skull of an unusual shape. Scientists immediately conducted a thorough analysis of the object. Dating showed that it was over 16,000 years old. The skull had inscriptions similar to artifacts found earlier. DNA analysis revealed four strands instead of three. Pablo Garcia considered this skull to be divine. He is sure that the gods of the ancient Indians visited our planet tens of thousands of years ago, and this skull belongs to one of the ancient deities. But the rest of the items, he believes, that they were productive by ordinary people. Last year at the same place, archaeologists found a four-toed mummy of a creature that looked like a dog. Pablo did not manage to conduct a DNA analysis. Of course, scientists in Mexico for the most part did not believe Pablo Enrique and consider him a charlatan. However, some scientists argue that this is a real sensation, which 100% confirms the existence of pallid contact in antiquity. What do you think? How real are the skull and artifacts found in the mine? X-ray of ancient mummies 2015 Pachacamac Archaeological Site in Peru 200 mummified remains discovered. Most of them were wrapped with several layers of fabric, and so that when trying to deploy them, the mummies did not collapse, it was necessary to use modern technologies. Canadian scientists from the University of Western Ontario scanned ancient mummies using a mobile X-ray complex. They have been dated to 1100 and 1470 AD. In six days, anthropologists took about 900 X-rays and performed more than 30 computer scans. Later, with the help of specialized computer programs, all the photographs were combined into a digital image. Thus, it was possible to understand that not all mummies were preserved in good condition, and in some pictures, they were in for a surprise. In the heads of the mummies were mysterious artifacts, the purpose of which is still unclear. One of the artifacts looked like a bent disc. Archaeologists nicknamed it tacos. In one mummy, a sharp object was examined in the eye socket, and in the other, a tattoo was noticed on the arm. One mummy was covered in cotton seeds. Scientists have not yet been able to explain the reason for this. It was assumed that this was done for ritual purposes. In the tissues with which the mummies were wrapped, scientists examined small shells, stone, and unidentified artifacts. Despite such a huge number of mummies in one place, archaeologists still have the main question. The mummification procedure was carried out deliberately, or was it the result of a dry climate and burial in the sand helped the mummies survive to this day? Mythical Creatures in the Basement it's 2006, England. A team of workers planned to demolish the house. It was the most ordinary day. The workers did not even suspect what kind of surprise they would expect during work. Going down to the basement, the workers found something. In the basement, they found hundreds of cardboard boxes. To their delight, they thought that the boxes contained very old aged wine. But if there was wine in the boxes, then this video would be released on another channel. They opened the boxes and saw mummies in them. They were not human mummies or even animals. They were strange mummies of some mythical creatures. Hundreds of mummies of different fairies and gnomes. They were very frightened and decided to check who originally owned this mansion. The first owner of the house was named Thomas Theodore Merling. Believe it or not, this man lived to be 160 years old, and he always looked younger than his peers. Those who knew him personally said that at the age of 80, he looked 40. There were many legends about this man, and it was believed that he had invented the elixir of eternal 
phenomenal youth. But as I said earlier, he only lived to 160. This unique man was born in the north of England in the city of Hallingshire in 1782. In the 19th century, Thomas Theodore Merling traveled the country displaying his unique collection of mythical creatures. It was called the Merling Cryptide Collection. Unfortunately, in those days his tour was not a success, and many considered him a scammer. Personally, I think that now he would have much more fans. There is a feeling that people these days believe much more nonsense. Thomas wrote about his failures and achievements in a diary that was found next to the mummies. The cause of death is still not known. Arrow of the Unfortunate Hunter Glacial archaeology no longer seems to be something new and unique. With the global melting of glaciers, archaeologists have more work to do. It's just that now you have to dress warmer and go to excavations in rather deserted places. As part of glacial archaeology, scientists study ancient biological materials such as dung, food and plant remains and artifacts that have been stored on the ice for a long time. The first and one of the most important ice finds was a mummy discovered in 1991 by German tourists in the Ostel Alps. This find is more than 5,000 years old. I already talked about this mummy in one of my previous videos. This year, on the 1st of September, archaeologists found an ancient arrow, which is tentatively 800-900 years old. Upon closer examination, archaeologists discovered that on one side the arrow was broken and the ancient hunter was trying to repair it. But most likely, here the hunter was overtaken by failure. After all, he did not succeed in using the arrow. Scientists in a detailed study noticed that this arrow never penetrated into any living organism. In addition to the arrow, archaeologists have found several remains of textiles. The purpose is not yet known. There is an assumption that these could have been pieces from a larger fabric, perhaps his cloth or a bag, maybe linen or cotton. Interestingly, until 1813, there was a ban on the import of cotton in Norway, and the found pieces of fabric are much older. Most likely, the owner of the arrow was a traveler and arrived Norway from warmer countries. Traces of opium 3,500 years old A sensational statement was made by archaeologists in Israel. Bronze Age people who lived in the Levant took psychoactive substances. In 2017, during excavations in the tombs of Tel Yehud, archaeologists unearthed pottery, but analyses were carried out only this year. The study of such excavations is very similar to a forensic medical examination at a crime scene. The analysis of 22 clay objects took place on equipment used by the police. People who took opium in the Bronze Age would never have thought they would be studied by cops from the 21st century. Analyses of gas chromatography and mass spectrometry carried out as part of the study showed that eight vessels contained opium alkaloids obtained from the poppy plant. The jars contained morphinin, which is derived from morphine, as well as opianic acid and the other compounds in the chemical signature of opium. Based on this, we can conclude that the ancient Canaanites were familiar with the psychoactive properties of the poppy. The ancient Egyptians could use opium as an offering to the underworld, or priests used it to evoke the spirits of dead relatives. Back in the 1960s, for the first time, experts suggested that such jugs were used to make opium. Their long necks resembled an inverted poppy head. The first written mention of opium was on 3,000-year-old Sumerian clay tablets, where the drug is referred to as gil, which means happiness. This is not the first find confirming that people used drugs in ancient times. Archaeologists have repeatedly found traces of marijuana, which was most likely used for religious rituals. Golden Coins Hidden in the Wall In the wall of the natural reserve of the Golan Heights, archaeologists have discovered a treasure trove of gold coins. What is unique about this find, you may ask? I will tell you. It's the fact that this territory during the Six-Day War in 1967 was annexed by Israel from Syria. These coins may shed light on ancient Muslim conquests in the region. 
44 pure gold coins were found. All coins had images of the emperors Phocus and Heraclius. The wall was built in 635 AD. In this year, the Muslims took control of this territory, although earlier there was a Christian settlement here. The Byzantine Empire, the eastern part of the Roman Empire, was in fact the longest-running medieval empire, lasting over 1,000 years. The place where the coins were found, known in the Christian world as Benai, it was significant because it was supposedly here that Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Coins confirm the fact that numerous military conflicts took place in this territory. The territory was important for Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. In 410 AD, after the fall of Rome and the invasion of the barbarians, the Byzantine Empire began to flourish. We are unlikely to be able to find out who the owner of the gold coins was and why he hid the them in the wall. But perhaps we will be able to restore the historical justice that thousands of archaeologists around the world are striving for. Thousands of archaeologists demand justice. Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and archaeologists are trying to get the Rosetta Stone and 16 other artifacts back to Egypt. I fully support them, because the history of ancient Egypt must belong to modern Egypt. The Prime Minister believes that the artifacts were taken out of the country in an illegal and unethical way. He created a petition that has already collected more than 2,500 signatures. Previously, the Egyptian government asked the UK to return the artifacts to their homeland, but now they are already demanding it. Mustafa Madbouli claims that the Rosetta Stone and other artifacts will be repatriated. It's only a matter of time. As you can see, global events are taking place even in the world of archaeology, which could not even be thought of before. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799, a year after Napoleon's invasion of Egypt, by a French officer supervising excavations in the city of Rashid in the Nile Delta. The stone contained texts in three different languages, Greek, Demo and Egyptian hieroglyphs. The object was seen as a cross-cultural translation key that could provide unparalleled insight into ancient civilizations. The text of the petition is as follows. The confiscation of the Rosetta Stone, among other artifacts, is an act of encroachment on Egyptian cultural values and identity and is a direct result of the cultural colonial violence against the Egyptian cultural heritage. History cannot be changed, but it can be corrected, and although the political, military, and state rule of the British Empire left Egypt many years ago, cultural colonization has not yet ended. Interestingly, Egypt is not the only country that requires the UK to return their artifacts, so Greece demands the return of the Parthenon marble to its homeland. But current British Prime Minister Liz Truss does not support the wishes of archaeologists from around the world. After all, she is well aware that the popularity of British museums will decrease significantly. Have you ever thought about the fact that the ruler of the state was a man without a face? And even this has already happened in our history. The King Without a Face no matter what anyone says, being a king is not an easy job. Especially if you're the king of Jerusalem and your country is constantly besieged by Muslims. And your main enemy is the strongest ruler of those times, Saladin. And what if we add to this the terrible disease of leprosy, which does not allow to live normally? This is the suffering that few people could cope with, but the hero of our video accepted all these challenges. Modern historians admire him for his willpower and devotion to the country. King without a face, Lepa King. All this is King Baldwin IV. An interesting fact is that scientists have finally found out which disease was the very first in the history of mankind. The oldest disease that is also mentioned in the Bible was leprosy, and now it is completely curable, even though it was different before. At one time, it was considered a curse for sins, at another time, divine grace. People People have had leprosy since the time of migration from Africa to Europe. Let's get back to the king. With his main enemy, Sultan Saladin, Baldwin had to face in the first year of his reign. The 13-year-old king successfully attacked Damascus, which forced Saladin to get out of Aleppo. Two years later, the opponents clashed in the battles of Fort Damascus and Anduha. 
The army of Saladin outnumbered the troops of the Kingdom of Jerusalem by several times. In addition, Baldwin could hold the horse's reins with only one hand. But this did not prevent the king from crushingly defeating his opponent in 1177 at the Battle of Montgazard. The stunned Saladin in his hearts said to his associates, as long as this boy is in Jerusalem, the city will not fall. Baldwin at that time was only 16 years old. The opponent had to negotiate peace. At the age of 24, Baldwin could no longer walk without support. Due to the inability to blink, his cornea dried up and he became blind. Plus, he survived a very dangerous fever that aggravated the disease. Realizing the approach of death, Baldwin appointed his six-year-old nephew as his heir. In fact, King Baldwin IV never wore a mask, as shown in various films. Yes, his face was indeed disfigured by leprosy, but until the last day of his life, he continued to lead the state and fight off the army of Saladin. Saladin took the city two years after Baldwin's death. The history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem ended. But the history of ancient Egypt did not end, which I will tell you about later. Cave of the Time of Ramesses II It rarely happens when archaeologists manage to touch places that had not been touched for thousands of years. This time in the Palmakim National Park in Israel, a group of researchers discovered an ancient burial. While working, the excavator collapsed the roof of the burial cave, inside which dozens of artifacts from the time of Pharaoh Ramesses II were found. The last time they were people, 3,300 years ago. Archaeologists have found dozens of fragments of pottery and bronze utensils, jugs and bowls of various shapes. Some vessels contain precious substances. In addition, to dishes, they managed to find weapons of war in the form of spears and arrowheads. All this was to serve the dead in the afterlife. According to archaeologists, such a find happens once in a lifetime. These are not Indiana Jones movies. This is real life, a real tomb straight from the ancient world. It's a time capsule. These vessels and weapons have not been touched by human hands for more than 3,300 years. Usually warriors were buried with weapons in those days. The burial chamber was manually carved into the rock in the shape of a square. Perhaps it was the burial place of an entire family or clan. Unfortunately, the preservation of the remains was so terrible that it would not even be possible for scientists to extract DNA for analysis. But scientists will be able to explore the ancient cosmetics and women's pennies that were discovered in London. Jar of Cream and Worn Women's Pennies in Tabat Square in London, archaeologists have found an eye-catching set of artifacts. A jar of cream and women's pennies lay at the bottom of the ditch. It would seem nothing unusual. After all, any girl could drop this from her handbag. But the girl dropped this set not yesterday, not last year, and not even 100 years ago. These artifacts are over 2,000 years old. In 120-150 AD, this place was a small ancient Roman town Londonium, and now this place is a huge modern metropolis. Archaeologists immediately opened the jar and saw in it a white cream with a fingerprint, as if this cream had been used yesterday. After analyzing the contents, it was possible to find out the composition. It was animal fat, starch, and tin, and there are no smells of lavender or chocolate. 2,000 years ago, a similar cream was used as a moisturizer for the skin of the face and hands. It is very interesting what brand of cosmetics the ancient Roman lady used at that time. But the second find is even more interesting. These are women's panties, which are very similar to modern bikinis or thongs. It's hard to believe that more than 2,000 years ago, ladies preferred such underwear. This set was found in 1953 at the bottom of an ancient well. As I said earlier, their age is 1st AD. Most likely, one of you is very familiar with the history of ancient Rome and knows very well that in those days no one wore underwear. And he will be right. Such underwear was not used for every day. In it, the girls performed various gymnastic exercises. 
This is confirmed by the mosaic at the Villa Romana del Casal in Sicily, 4th century AD. To perform complex acrobatic stunts, the girls needed at least minimal clothing. In addition to performances, women in ancient Rome used such pennies in a special period, putting pieces of folded fabric or wool inside. Here is another example of the ancient Roman mosaic, Fight of the Gladiators, from the Villa Borghese, Rome, 3rd century AD. Have you ever wondered what sounds were in Rome on the battlefield? Sounds of a Roman Battlefield The mouthpiece of an ancient Roman horn was found in an ancient Roman fort of Vindelanda. The metal horn was a musical instrument used to convey orders to troops during combat. No fewer than nine Roman forts were built of wood or stone in Vindelanda from about 85 to 370 AD, creating one of the most complex archaeological sites in Britain and a unique cultural heritage of frontier life. Today, Vindelanda is an active archaeological site, where excavations have previously unearthed thousands of perfectly preserved shoes, textiles, woodwork, and Vindelanda tablets, the oldest surviving documents in Britain dating from the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. Researchers were excavating the floor of Hadrian's workshop, buried under the remains of a scola, officer's club, when they discovered a rare copper alloy mouthpiece dating from around 120-128 AD. Barbara Burley, curator in the Vindelanda Trust, said, When you find a piece of musical instrument, it helps us get a better idea of not only what the army looked like, but how it sounded. And now we will go to China and see what the funeral suits look like. Burial Costumes of the Han Dynasty in ancient times in China, high-ranking people were buried in unique suits made of jade plates fastened with gold wire. The cold and smooth plates created an incredibly beautiful mosaic that symbolized the wealth of the Han Dynasty. Similar burials except China were not seen anywhere else. In Chinese, they are called pinyin, meaning jade suit. For centuries, people thought jade burial suits were just a legend. People could not even imagine that the rulers in those days could be so rich as to completely cover their bodies with incredibly expensive jade. But the discovery in 1986 confirmed that these were not the legends described in the old text. This discovery became a sensation not only for China, but for the whole world. Finally, archaeologists were able to confirm that the rulers of the Han Dynasty were buried in jade suits. The Han Dynasty was extremely powerful and ruled from 206 BC to 220 AD. This is one of the most iconic Chinese dynasties. The Han remain the main ethnic group in China today. The tombs of the Han Dynasty rulers changed the idea of Chinese burial practices. In 1983, in Dinshan, Hebei province, researchers discovered one of the most expensive jade suits in history which belonged to the ruler of Huai. The costume is made of 1,203 pieces of jade connected with gold threads, the total weight of which is 2,580 grams. The most complex costume consisted of 2,498 pieces of jade. Mosaics on the Sea of Galilee and we will return to Israel again, where archaeologists have discovered floor mosaics on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. This indicates that this place was a prosperous region in ancient times, inhabited by early Christian Jewish communities, and later it became an important Islamic administrative center. Once this place was an important trade center centered around the production of sugar, and the son of the caliph ordered the palace, which included one of the first mosques erected in the Palestine area. The area was hit by a massive earthquake around 749 AD and was later abandoned. Abandoned. Professor Kunin and his team have been conducting archaeological research in the area for the past decade, starting with excavations and restoration work at the Caliph's Palace. Work was suspended during the pandemic, but this year the team continued excavation at the site. One of the greatest golden treasures in history.
One of the largest, richest, and most beautiful gold treasures in Danish history has been found near the town of Jelen in Denmark. The treasure dates back to the 6th century. An amazing discovery was made by an amateur archaeologist who had recently bought a metal detector and wandered around the fields with it. Moreover, the treasure was found more than six months ago, in December last year, but the discovery was made public only now. The hoard weighs a little less than a kilogram and consists of a saucer-sized medallions and Roman coins that have been turned into jewelry. The most important is the heavy gold coin of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, 285-337. Some of the items have runic designs and inscriptions that can refer to the kings of that time, as well as to Scandinavian mythology. One of the finds is a Bracteate, flat thing coin, with a series of runes and a braided male hat. There is also an image of a horse and a bird. In addition, there is a runic inscription on the coin which, according to early interpretation, translates as supreme. Supreme can refer both to the ruler and, as especially characteristic of later mythological contexts, to be associated with the god Odin. Scientists note that although there was a small city in the area during the migration period, there is no evidence that long before the rise of the Danish kingdom, there lived an unprecedented military leader or a great man who was the owner of these treasures. As experts explained in the early 500s, some very rich but unknown person decided to bury his treasury, perhaps in the hope of saving it in case of war or as a sacrifice to higher powers. The second version is supported by the fact that at this time the climate in Northern Europe turned upside down after a volcanic explosion in Iceland in 500. 136, and it was for this purpose that most of the treasures of that period were buried. A full pot of oil lamps. The new find surprised archaeologists. It was a pot, common for that time, buried in the ground, similar to those used in Vendanisa in kitchens. Only it was completely new and intact and for some reason filled with oil lamps. The most common and practical option was made from clay. They were produced throughout the empire in huge quantities, and even simple lamps could be decorated with a relief in the center, where the hole for the oil filling was located. These were the lamps the pot was filled with. Archaeologists have counted 22 of them. Inside each lamp was the smallest coin of the Roman Empire. For a few such coins, one could have a mega supper, a soup, and a portion of cheap wine. The minting of the found coins was attributed to 66 67 AD. The vessel and lamps were dated to the same period. The lamps were decorated in different ways. On one there was a flower, on the other a defeated gladiator. Archaeologists also examined a peacock, a lion, the moon goddess Selena, the winged son of, of the goddess Venus Cupid, and even an erotic scene. In addition to lamps with coins, charred fragments of animal bones were also found in the pot. What does this whole set mean? No one understood. For whoever owned this pot, the set of lamps and coins meant something for sure. But what? We may never know. Ancient Chronicles hid the name of the Scorpio King. Before the release of the action-packed historical thriller The Mummy Returns in 2001, only Egyptologists and fans of William Golding's books knew about the existence of such a historical character as the King of Scorpio. At the same time, the personality of this pharaoh was presented in such a way that he looked more like some kind of fictional mystical creature than the real ruler of the Egyptian state. The fact that in the history of Egypt there was a pharaoh named Scorpio, Egyptologists learned at the end of the 19th century. Then, during archaeological excavations in the Hierarchan Polis, a very ancient tomb was discovered. It was also plundered. Scientists nevertheless found a number of objects that were quite valuable from an archaeological point of view. Jewelry, ceramics, a fragment of the ruler's mace. Most of these finds bore the name Scorpion. Thus, a new ruler, Scorpio, was included in the pantheon of Egyptian pharaohs. And for a whole century, 
he single-handedly bore the name of a poisonous arthropod inhabitant of the desert. Until 1988, when Egyptologists had to slightly correct the list of the rulers of Egypt. In these lists, the first rulers of Egypt, Maimetho, as befits an Egyptian priest, designated the gods Hebe, Mat, Osiris, Ptah, Ra, Set, Thoth, Horus, and Shu. Ordinary mortals followed immediately, the first of which was the pharaoh Menes, and the last were the pharaohs of the Surtees dynasty who ruled before the Ptolemies. However, in this royal list there was no mention of either Scorpio or other kings of ancient Egypt. All this confusion lasted until the Egyptologists sat down thoroughly to study the history of the rulers of Egypt, and they did not find that between the gods and the real Egyptian pharaoh Menes, in fact there was a whole galaxy of previously unknown kings. In order to somehow streamline this moment, historians called all the rulers of this era the pharaohs of pre-dynastic Egypt, or the kings of the Oo dynasty. It was among these pharaohs that both scorpions were who ruled Egypt in the 4th millennium BC, more than 100 years apart. Thus, no one knew about the existence of pharaoh Scorpio I for several thousand years, despite the fact that this ruler in one is truly the first pharaoh in the history of Egypt. Mystical Pyramid Excavations were carried out in the Atacama Desert in 2003 by a French explorer. He was intrigued by the nearby geoglyphs and strange mummies that look a lot like aliens. This expedition lasted almost two years, and finally the researchers were lucky. At a depth of 4.5 meters in the north of the Atacama, a strange pyramid crystal about 12 centimeters high was found. This artifact was a pyramid with the correct proportions made of some kind of bluish transparent material. The find was immediately dubbed a sensation, because something like that had not been found before. Experts have established the age of this artifact – three and a half billion years. The crystal is the oldest find in the history of archaeology. When it became known about the age of the pyramid, a real hunt for the scientists began. He survived four assassination attempts, after which he left the country for Chile. The Frenchman really wanted to continue his search in the hope of finding something else, but four months later, the archaeologist died of poisoning. The fate of the artifact was unknown for a long time. In 2019, among the declassified documents from the famous Area 51 in the United States, experts found an inaccurate description of this artifact, its age, while the location of the find was not indicated. Since then, information has appeared that it was the Americans who, having poisoned the archaeologists, took possession of the pyramid. A collection of treasures in the oldest capital of China Back in the 1920s, the ruins of the city of Sangsejui, which was the first capital of the ancient kingdom of Shu, were discovered there. Excavations have been going on since 1986, when archaeologists discovered two sacrificial pits filled with treasures. Last year, the most ambitious excavations were carried out. About a dozen sacrificial pits with one and a half thousand artifacts were found. And now archaeologists have announced that they have been able to excavate six more more previously unknown sacrificial pits. They found about 500 fully and fragmentarily preserved relics of great historical and material value. Suffice it to say that most of the finds are exquisite gold masks, jade and ivory items, and bronze artifacts. Taking into account last year findings, the Sanctuary treasury has been replenished with more than 2,000 items. Among them, for example, there is a unique sacred tree made of bronze. In general, for the the entire period of excavations in the ancient capital of the First Kingdom in China, about 10,000 cultural relics were found, the age of which is from 3,000 to 5,000 years. It is believed that the kingdom of Shu itself arose about 5,000 years ago. Archaeologists report that during the recent work, very rare and valuable large bronze vessels were discovered, some of which, after examination, are likely to receive the status of national treasures. The fact is that some of these bronze items have a unique shape, which researchers have never seen before. Numerous pieces of ivory and jade are no less exciting finds, a significant part of them were in only one sacrificial pit. It is noteworthy that there were no bronze items in this pit, which indicates some special traditions that existed during the reign of Shu. Burial of the Bronze Age on a Golf Course 
British archaeologists have discovered a coffin containing human remains and a stone axe with a wooden handle in a pond on a golf course in the east of England. Scientists have established that the rare find, which has survived thanks to silt, is about 4,000 years. Apparently, the burial belonged to a person who held a high position in the local society. The early Bronze Age of Britain is usually dated from 2500 to 1200 BC. Over the millennium, bronze gradually replaced stone as the main material from which weapons and tools were made. During this period, the tradition of bell-shaped beakers turned out to be the main archaeological culture widespread in Britain. Burials of this era are inhumations. As a rule, people were buried one by one in graves on their mounds. Bell-shaped goblets were often used as burial items, which is most likely associated with the arrival of migrants from Central Europe to Britain. Archaeologists told about the discovery of a rare coffin of the early Bronze Age, hollowed out of an oak trunk, which had previously been split into two halves. It contained the remains of a man whose grave goods consisted of an axe. The lid of a coffin has not survived. Scientists suggest that the burial was made around 2000 BC. The coffin turned out to be about 3 meters long and 1 meter wide. Inside, it was lined with plants, in particular yew and juniper leaves. After he was placed in the grave, a gravel mound was poured over it, which was mainly due to people with high status in society. This find was made by accident while working in a pond at a golf course, which is located in Lincolnshire. Discover the real relics of St. Peter a sensational find was made by a worker in the Roman church of Santa Maria in Capella. During the restoration work under a stone slab at the altar, he discovered two ancient clay jugs with the names of the first popes, Peter, Felix, Callistus, and Cornelius. And as you know, the apostle Peter was the first Roman bishop, that is, the first pope of Rome. For the past 35 years, this church has been closed due to its dilapidated state. Finally, in 2020, restoration work began in it. When one of the workers lifted a stone slab next to the ancient altar, he saw a cache. It contained dilapidated clay jugs, on the lids of which the names of the first popes were written. The fact that the remains of the first saints are kept in the church of St. Maria in Capella has been known for a long time. However, who exactly was not known. Also, the sources say that it is here that the tunic of the Mother of God is kept, but so far it's considered a lost relic. The found remains were transferred to the Vatican, but there was no official statement that these were the relics of St. Peter. The rector of the church, Father Massimiliano Floridi, believes that until an examination is made, it is not worth saying that these are definitely the relics of St. Peter. But the most interesting thing is that in the 1960s, under the Basilica of St. Peter on the Vatican Hill, a tombstone was found with an inscription in Greek, Patris Ani, Peter is here. In the tomb was found the body of man about 60 years old who lived according to research in the first century AD. He was dressed in rich robes embroidered with gold, but his head was missing. And in 1968, Paul VI officially recognized them with the relics of Saint the Apostle Peter. And here they are. Scientists are sure that the find in the church of Santa Maria in Capella is precisely the real relics of the Apostle Peter. The point in this unusual discussion perhaps will put a comparative genetic analysis. After all, it may happen that the results will coincide, or not, time will show. Mysterious 12-meter rack According to experts, the mysterious 12-meter wrecked ship found on Latvian beach is about 200 years old, and it may well be the remains of a lost warship of the British Royal Navy. Part of the wreck was found by local residents on the Dagua River beach, which is located just a few kilometers from Riga, the capital of Latvia. However, the true scale of the discovery remained hidden until heavy equipment in the form of excavators appeared on the beach, which were able to dig up a much larger part of the wreckage, 12 meters long and 4 meters wide. While the ship's origin remained to be seen, there is evidence that its hull was once plated with copper, a technology first developed for the British Royal Navy. The ship's age is also unknown, but it is made from oak, which was a popular material for shipbuilding in Britain until the mid-1800s, leading Latvian experts to speculate that it could be between 150 and 200 years old. 
built for the construction of the ship of one ship of the line, timber was required from about 4,000 mature oak trees. To expose the remains of the mysterious oak and copper ship, excavators had to remove a massive 10 by 4 layer of sand. The copper plates that protected against ship worms and the corrosive effects of salt water have long been removed, but images of the remains show that the ship's wooden beams surprisingly well preserved. The wreck has recently been declared a cultural monument, allowing further research into its origins. The ship will also be surveyed using GPR, which should help reveal its true scale. Dark-headed people from ancient icons to better understand the shock of the educated aesthetes of the ancient times, it is worthy noting that it was a rather small and close world. Traveling took a lot of time, West territories remained unknown, and everything new was very difficult to squeeze into the usual system of values. Ancient Greece and Rome are advanced civilizations. At the same time, not far from them, for example, in equatorial Africa, life came to a standstill at the stage of primitive tribes. Needless to say, say how different the inhabitants of those primitive settlements were from the Europeans. And although black slaves in antiquity were in abundance, people of similar nature with a more expressive appearance could be perceived cardinally. True, this does not explain in any way where the stable image of a dog headed man came from the Indian, Persian, and even Chinese chronicles. The latter had few connections with the European continent and developed authentically, because the distance to them was enormous. Alexander the Great, who walked half the world in military campaigns, greatly expanded the horizon of the ancient world. An Indian miniature titled The Troops of Alexander the Great Are Fighting the Dark Hatted presents such an episode as part of the story as if this could even happen in reality. Although in this image, the creatures with the supposedly dark hats look more like primates, armed but it is not clear by someone or on their own. Akrakas and Ogani are Coptic saints with a dog's head. This is a Coptic icon of the 18th century, and on it, in the glow of a halo, those very dog-headed people, figures from the depth of collective memory, appear. According to legend, Akraken and Ogani were followers of the Coptic saint Mercury Abisifen and served him so faithfully that they earned a place in iconography. Skeptics consider such images to be an echo of a pagan cult or a reference to Anubis, one of the main gods of the ancient Egyptian pantheon. It was he who was depicted with the body of a man and the head of the dog. And in order to learn more about the ancient rules in our history, I strongly recommend that you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. I will definitely answer every kind comment. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!